Hi guys. Today we're working on unit six, lesson nine, page 281. And it says discuss subtraction problems. So we're going to be pausing to talk about strategies that you like to use for these subtraction problems. It says use any method. And then, but it also says to make a proof drawing. So what I'm going to do is make a proof drawing for this first one as I model it. And then you can choose to do a proof drawing or not. I know some of you enjoy the proof drawings, others of you not so much. As usual, I'm going to do my work over here on a piece of paper. You can do that or not. That's up to you. Um, I like to do it on a piece of paper because I can draw it larger and you can see see it better. We are going to do all four of these, not all four of them together. I'm going to do this one. We are going to do this one. You will be doing these two on your own. We have not done subtraction together in a little while. So um, if you have questions, you need to make sure and ask them. So the first thing we're going to do with any story problem is we're going to read it and we're gonna figure out what needs to happen. I always like to make a math mountain for everything, just so I know um, what what's going on with it. The total, because these they're telling us these are subtraction problems, the total will be given in each of those, one of the partners, and so one of the partners will always be missing for each of these because we know it's subtraction. And when we have subtraction, we have a total at the top that we're working with. All right. A teacher buys 200 erasers for his students. He gives 152 of them away. How many erasers does he have left over? So if I'm making a math mountain, my total that we start with is 200. And one of the partners is 152. So we're looking for how many are left over, and that will be the other partner. So since we know that this is a subtraction equation, we know that this larger number is going to go on top. So that's 200. And then the smaller number goes on the bottom, 152. Put our line under there and a minus. One of the things that I like to do when we are working with subtractions, especially, is I like to put a line down the middle of each one to show the different columns. Something I like to remind my students is that if you do this, make sure that you don't mistake those lines for a number one. That's why I do them in a different color because it helps to keep that a little bit clearer for me. In class, I give kids graph paper to work with. Out of class, we just don't have that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now they say to, to draw a proof drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a proof drawing. When we are working with subtraction, we only draw the top number. We don't draw the bottom number. When we are working with addition, we draw both of those. Now, when we look at this, we can see right away that we're gonna have to break this apart because we have to be able to subtract something in the ones and something in the tens. So right away, I'm gonna go ahead and break apart this 100 and I'm gonna break it into 10 10 sticks. But I also know that I'm going to need to break apart one of the tens into ones because I can't subtract two from zero. So I'm going to X one of those out. And now I'll draw 10 ones. And notice that I did divide them into groups of five, so it's easier for me to figure out what's going on. All right, so now that I have my picture drawn, I can go ahead and do my Xing out. So I'm gonna X out two from my ones, and I'm gonna X out five from my tens. I'm going to X out one from my hundreds. So now I don't have any hundreds left. So if I count them up, my number is going to be smaller than 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. So 
when I did my proof drawing, I ended up with 48. Okay, I prefer the ungrouping first method so that once I get to going on my subtraction, I am going to be able to, to subtract everything. So I can't subtract, so that's what my answer over here for the proof drawing. Now I'm gonna work on the equation. So I'm gonna ungroup everything first so that it's all ready to go for me. So I can't subtract two from zero. I can't subtract five from zero. So I have to go over here and take one of these hundreds and that leaves me with 100 on the top and 10 tenths. I'm not done yet though because I need to change this into 10 ones. So I'm gonna take one of these tens and leave myself with nine X out that zero, and now I have 10 ones there. So now I'm ready to do my subtraction. 10 take away two equals eight. Nine take away five is four. So I ended up with the same answer for both of these. Are there any questions about ungrouping when we're working with hundreds? Just like before, if I see you consistently getting your equations wrong, if you get the wrong answer over and over for all of your answers, I will ask you to start doing some proof drawings just so I can start seeing how your brain is working to figure out how I can help you best, all right? So just so you know, if this isn't working for you, then I'm gonna have you start doing the pictures. So our answer is 48 erasers. Make sure that when you are finished with this and you take a picture that I can see your work. So if you just have this over here, I'm gonna wonder where this part is. All right, I do, we do. So let's do this part together. I'm not going to draw a picture this time. We're just going to do the ungrouping first method and then um, figure out the answer that way. The school cafeteria has 500 apples. Some of them are served with lunch. After lunch, there are 239 apples left. How many apples does the cafeteria serve? So I'll make my math mountain. I've got 500 apples I'm starting with and then I have 239 left over. How many did we give away? So we need to figure out that partner there. So 500, you write your equation, write it big enough so that you can do all that work. Otherwise this gets pretty messy. Minus 239. So remember, you are doing this with me. So if you do this with me, you've got half of the work done and only two to do on your own. All right, I wanna ungroup him first because I can't subtract nine from zero or three from zero. So what am I going to do? Who can tell me what I need to do? Yes, I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to take away one of those hundreds, which leaves me with four. Now what? Thank you. I'm gonna X out my zero and show that I have 10 tens there, but I'm not done, am I? What do I do next? X out my 10 which leaves me with nine tens, and I'm going to add those 10 tens to this zero. So it looks just like that. Xing out those zeros and doing all of that work is going to be so helpful for you to understand what's happening. All right, this is one of those times where you're just gonna unmute yourself. When I ask the question, say the answer one time, and then mute yourself again. What is 10 minus nine, everyone? What is nine minus three, everyone? And 
And what is 4 minus 2, everyone? All right. So our answer is 261 apples. All right. So for these ones, I am going to go ahead and read them to you. And I'll write down the equation with you, but you are solving these ones on your own. Teresa sells guitars. She has 600 guitars. She sells 359. How many guitars does she have left? So there's our math mountain. And our equation should look like this. Number four says, Jorge is on a basketball team. He scores 180 points one year, or 181 points one year. He scores some points in a second year too. He scores a total of 400 points over the two years. How many points does he score the second year? So our total is 400. Our partner is 181. All right, friends, thanks for working hard today.